This is the only good game Ubisoft has ever made. You may recognize this. This is the North American version, uh, Battle of Giants Dinosaurs, but in Europe and other regions, it was known as Combat of Giant Dinosaurs, and the even the covers were different. So the North American version had a really like shitty kind of looking cover, and then the European covers were really clean and nice. Um, so I guess get fucked, America. In my humble opinion, the first game is the only good game in the series, and I've extensively played all of them. I am a veteran in this franchise. I have been playing this game since I was nine years old, quite consistently. There is no wiki. I am the wiki. I learned everything by myself. I could not use online references. I had to write up my own spreadsheets and tables. Um, anyway, is this is my meta T-Rex PvP build for the many people that I obviously fight in this game because so many people play this game. So let's just get started. I've already unlocked every single dinosaur because of course I have. You know, I feel like playing as a Carcharodontosaurus. What should we call him? Um, I'm gonna give him a very mature and appropriate name deserving of my chat. Fuck. This is what I nicknamed my Excadrill in Pokemon White, I think I was? I don't remember which version I played. So we can make him piss colored. The The character customization in this game is serviceable. I, I will explain this franchise. It, I don't know if I should explain the entire franchise and how I think each game holds up on like a tier list or something. But uh, perhaps I should just explain how this game works first. That's a, that's a good starting point. So this is a turn-based combat game in that you select the skills you wish to queue in battle. You know, I'll actually just start a fight. That'll make sense. So you initiate a battle by approaching a different dinosaur. This is the combat UI. You unlock attacks later on. Red attacks are purely damage based. They do the most damage and they scale off of this red stat here. Later on, we're going to unlock defense skills, or parries as they're called in this game. So a parry works in that you deal a smaller amount of damage, and in return, you also restore a small amount of health. And the amount of health you restore can be built up by investing more into the defense skill. Now, the speed skill does not dictate who goes first. It actually dictates the amount of moves you're able to do. Now, when you select your skills, you then have to trace over a uh, black line and the harder the more skills you're executing the harder the line becomes to trace so obviously this is a lot easier if you're playing with a stylus on a ds since i'm using an emulator i'm tracing with my mouse so let's see how we go now if you kill an enemy with I think it's above 90% accuracy after tracing the line, which is represented here. Then you get that unique kill animation. It's honestly, it's, it's fucking sick. Like this game was 2008, I think. And I think it's still wonderfully animated after all this time. Yeah, so we're fighting a phone box. And uh, there's plenty of these types of enemies. Uh, to provide spoilers, you can, um, you can fight a school. You can fight a truck. You can fight a crane. All of the Combat of Giants games outside of this one are uh, garbage. They also have severe balancing issues. You can very easily trivialize all encounters. So right now, this is the first level. These encounters are trivial because I'm playing as a powerful class from the get-go. As we progress through the story, the enemies get a lot harder. They deal significantly more damage. And the glass cannon nature of this build will start to become more difficult to manage. I have no idea if this commentary is fun or not. Maybe maybe the raw autistic energy is enough to be entertaining. I don't know. Self-awareness is not one of my strong suits. So with Combat of Giant Dragons, they introduce physical trading cards. And with those trading cards, they'd give you gem codes. And if you got a really good gem code from the cards, you could then enter that code into the game and it would immediately give you access right after the tutorial in the first level to an exceptionally powerful gem. And you might be saying, well, that's just completely based off luck. 
Well, no, because every single gem code is available online. So all you have to do is just look up the most powerful gem in the game, which by the way is the level 5 fire breath attack. And then you play as a fire dragon. Fire dragons are meta for PvP. Combat of giant dragons pretty much gives you the ability to use a super OP code to one-shot everything in the game straight away and to one-shot all of your friends in PvP. Now you might be saying, well, just don't don't get the code and play the game like it was meant to be played. Well, the problem is that the game is super fucking boring and bad anyway. Because, you see, this game has a surprising amount of quality of life features compared to the second game. For the second game, whenever it was telling you, it, it would show you, okay, this is what, this is the objective for the level. You need to fucking fart on this crystal or whatever and activate the puzzle or some shit. And the problem with that is that every single time it told you to do something like that, the game would freeze for like 30 seconds just to display a cutscene and it's unskippable and it's absolutely infuriating to deal with. Um, Alright, anyway, this is uh, this is the builds. So we're gonna go with two attack for now and then we'll grab uh, a few speed points later, maybe two. I reckon uh, three speed's very good for endgame. I think I can also like change the color of something. Yeah, okay, I can change the color of my underbelly. Let's change it to uh... Oh, red matches the stripes. Yep, sure, sounds good. Yeah, with dragons, the gameplay loop is exceptionally boring and slow. You have to complete the game four times with four different classes in order to unlock the secret final boss. And he's just super easy anyway, even without the super broken gems. So, this is an intimidation check. You swipe hard enough, if you're confronted by a dinosaur, you can tell them to just fuck off and confront them later. So as you can see, I'm being sexually assaulted by tutorials right now. Uh, the funny thing about the feeding animations in this game is that you can in interrupt them instantly. So I'm gonna take a trink right now, and then just, <laughs> just walk away, because it already heals me. I don't need to waste my time watching the animation. Now, Combat of Giant Mutant Insects also had balancing issues, but for completely different reasons. There was a power called Freeze, the thing is, is that in a game where the winner is decided by the one who's attacking first, that means that if you attack first, and then you apply freeze, your enemy is slowed for pretty much the rest of the game, because they're not going to be able to counter you, because they can't react to your normal speed attacks when all of their actions are slowed down. So you can just attack them once, you get one attack, it applies freeze, you've already been in the enemy. So yeah, the combat of giant dinosaurs, the first in the franchise, is the most well balanced in that you cannot make a build that just outright cheeses the game. Like this build is powerful, but during endgame things are going to start getting harder. Sometimes when I'm in a public space, like I'm going shopping, one thing I like to do is I start screaming internally in my head to scare away any telepaths. I don't actually believe in telepaths. Oh, whoops. I accidentally activated a mysterious crane. Shit, I spoiled it. Yeah, that. this one's a crane. It's one of the hardest enemies in the game. It's got big dick stats. It's also got quite a difficult outline to draw. Not as hard as the truck, but it's, it's definitely one of the harder ones. Shit, no. I need, to, I need to get up in my gamer position. I'm slouching right now. Ugh. Right. That was terrible. This is, this is terrible. Our health, our health is pretty equal though. There we go. Killed the fucking crane cunt. Okay, this is the final boss. Oh my god, that was almost perfect. Gonna pick one attack just so I have an easier choice pattern. 
That should be enough to finish him off. And that's the final boss. Alright, that was Combat of Giants Dinosaurs. Uh, I hope you guys found this a little bit interesting. It's a very weird game. Um, if, if you're interested in me playing like more strange games from my childhood, uh, let me know. I bet there's a few interesting ones I might be able to like think about doing. Uh, whether or not I'll do the rest of this franchise, the combat uh, franchise, the Combat of Giants Dragons ROM does not work. It is practically unplayable. Um, I have not tested the Mutant Insects ROM. It might be completely fine. I could possibly play through that game. Uh, I just don't like it as much as this one. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for making it this far. If you if you got up to here, I'm assuming you did. If you're hearing me say this, uh, it. I really like just sharing the stuff, kind of getting it off, getting it off my chest, because it's not content that's really appropriate for my main channel, so that's kind of why this one exists, so I can still share this stuff without it invading the the stuff I want to do for my main channel. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.